I want to say it's uh, always a privilege to come in your presence. There is something that I've actually seen in Christianity today. Many have come into holiness, but they don't understand what holiness is. So Psalm chapter 11, verse 3 says, what can the righteous do if the foundation be destroyed? So it's not only stopping certain things that we do, it's only it's leaving the things that we say. The message of holiness, the difficult part of it is separation. To stop that which you are doing, that will, that will disturb your walk with the Lord. So we want us to know how do we lay a solid foundation in Christ Jesus. So I've got uh, parts, some will be taken over two days, founded on the rock Jesus. Jesus is the rock. Any other thing that we do without Jesus Christ, it's an academic exercise. It means we are wasting our time. So we want to see a Christian, why a Christian life is compared to a building. We all know when you are building a house, the higher you want to go, the deeper you go, you dig your foundation. Why is it like that? These are things that we want us to understand in terms of Christianity. Because many just say, ah, holiness, holiness. Especially for women, holiness is more evident in women. In men, I'm putting on my shirt like this, unless if I'm putting on an earring, or putting on my beard around, like shaping my beard, or they are cutting my hair anyhow. But for women, they become the embodiment of a virtuous woman. The way they dress is no longer shouting. They are no longer put on the non-fitting clothes, which um, is a distraction to other children of God. So it's not only leaving the clothes. The holiness that comes from within going outside through adornment. What do we mean? Psalms 127 tells us something, but we are not going to read yet. I just want to lay a foundation so that we understand the message of Christianity has been distorted. The foundation has been laid that you must get a car. If you come into Christ, you must get this, you must get that. Which I think it's a traversity of justice to the word of God. God never, God never promised anybody a car. God never promised you a job. That's what you are asking, but he never promised. God is sovereign. Whether he answer prayer or not. So don't hold God a transom. Say, God, you must first bless me. What are you doing with your life? Yesterday, we learned of uh, the olive, the dove. When it came back the whole day, it was looking everywhere where to land. It came back. Holding an olive leaf. Where are you spending your day and what are you doing? This is Christianity. This is where your foundation has been laid. Because if you are being taught once saved, forever saved, it means you will die in ignorance. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 <clears throat> tells us what uh, that my people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. It's one of the call, calling, one of the job that my God my Lord Jesus Christ gave me. He said, go and build my house. My people are perishing. That became central core of my calling. Go and build my house. My people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. Many doctrines have gone out there. Many spirits are out there. It's very important. The moment you miss your foundation, it could be in a work, it could be in career, in a relationship, in a marriage, in a ministry. If you go in a ministry where they teach you the wrong things, that there is no hell. God was making jokes when he was talking about hell in the Bible. Then it becomes a danger. It allows you to live the life that you are living without fear of being judged. This heaven that we see, heaven and earth, is certainly going to pass away. But this word will not pass away. So let us get into our teaching founded on the rock, the rock Christ Jesus. Jesus is the rock. 
you can build on a sand you can no matter how um marvelous the building is looking appealing to the human eye as long as jesus christ is not part of it he said unless it's not our teaching but attempt because we want to get a few things across it's important that we bring some of those things so that fellow brethren who are following us up psalms 127 except the lord built the house they they labor in vain that build it except the lord keep the city the watchman worketh but in vain the second verse the second verse is very sorrowful it is in vain it is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late to eat bread of sorrows for he has given his beloved sleep if you work anyhow if you don't know why you are in a ministry why you are in a church spending 15 hours is not the amount of time that you spend on a computer it's not the amount of time that you spend in the church it's the quality of worship how rich is your worship in god so we'll talk about founded on the rock authority and power in god's word through repentance into faith like i was saying yesterday on our preaching grace or the olive leaf without repentance there is no obedience without resurrection there is no salvation any other gospel is perversion it's a lie because there is no way that you can say ah we get angry we get upset we do, we we swear when we are driving somebody cuts you you are busy swearing all those words ah this idiotic man these are ah, all those things you will answer for every foolish word so if you don't repent how are you going to make heaven how will you make it into the kingdom of god a christian responsible to be built um a Christian is responsible to build up into a dwelling place for the Lord. You need to build up a place for the Lord to come in. God does not use a filthy vessel, a defiled vessel. You cannot have the spirit of strife and the Holy Spirit will be working with you. No, it's impossible. It is impossible. You cannot go and be drinking beer and say the Holy Spirit is speaking. The Spirit the gifts of God are without repentance. What does it mean? You still can continue speaking in tongues. But those are useless tongues. They don't edify anybody. Even the devil sees, even the devil can raise people from the dead. That's not Christianity. Christianity is not about how many people have risen from the dead. I've got quite a number of people that I prayed. But that's not holiness. Holiness is your personal walk with the Lord Jesus. If you walk with him in truth and in spirit, then his power manifests. But it doesn't manifest where the spirit of strife. Jude, the book of Jude. It's only one chapter, Jude. Because if I say Jude chapter 2, I will see somebody looking for chapter 2. You know, we need, to, we need to know our Bible, children of God. We cannot claim. There's a Muslim was boasting of knowing all the scriptures, all their Bible, until God told him everything is nonsense. You Christians, 20 years in church, you don't even, I don't even know this one. Huh? Which, where do you get your authority from? If you, can, if you don't know the word. Go Matthew chapter 6, verse chapter, you go to chapter 20, verse 2, Jude chapter 1, verse 27, Revelation chapter 2, verse this is what children of God must do. All those African movies that you are watching, all those numbers, useless numbers that you are claiming, what do you need them for? Busy claiming telephone numbers that you can save on your phone. Where are you going to save your Bible? Your Bible when the devil comes, when the devil comes to fight you now, are you going to pick up your phone and start saying, ah, which verse was that? You would have finished you already. Children of God, we need to be wiser. Jude chapter 1, 
It's only the same one chapter, 20 and 21. But here, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying to the, in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost, this is a significant statement. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus unto eternal life. These are very significant things that we are hearing here. These are very significant things. Keep yourselves in the love of God. What happens in the love of God? There are many things that you need to understand. The Spirit of God is very gentle, long-suffering. When you, when you still see that you say, ah, I'm a Christian, but every, <laughs> wherever you are, you are always fighting. I saw one pastor, he was, he was, he was already making his shirt like this. So, ha, this one needs to be de delivered. Oh. It's a demon manifesting. They cannot work with the spirit of God. And say, ah, oh, I want to pray. Who are you going to evangelize? Your life is not ministering already. He wanted to, he wanted, he wanted to arrange it, to rearrange my face. And now we are talking about Jesus. You want to take me back to creation, Abby? That's why people reject your gospel. It's what, how you live your life that people accept your gospel. The message of holiness is about how you live your life. It's not what you tell people. In German, like we say, um, the, um, the tongue does not have bones. You can say, ah, me, I'm flying, me. You can fly with your mouth. I live a holy life. That's what the demons also do. They claim to be living a holy life. What difference do you make? What fruits? By your fruits, you would know. We learned about that when you're doing the Matthew chapter 7. By their fruits, you will know them. Because many tend to misapply the scripture. Do not judge for you'll be judged. We're not condemning anybody. We want you to know certain things when you come into a ministry, when you go into a ministry, when you go into a church. There are certain things that you need to see. If you don't see those things, let there be red lights. What is increasing in all the things, in all uh, your life in the church is the number of years. Quality life, nothing. Fasting, you cannot fast. Each time there's fasting, you're already on your obono. You're already on your obono. It is very unfortunate at times that this, this our body, it's a bag of sandal. It's, it's not taking us anywhere. It's the spirit man that it's the spirit man that is going to accompany us, that is going to meet the creator. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22. It says, In whom you are also built together for inhabitation of God through the Spirit. We are seeing here the Bible is advancing a course. It's laying up a foundation. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22. In him, you are also built for a habitation of God through the Spirit. God lives in you. So if you see me fighting now, that's when you say, ah, if God is living, is this how God is living in angel, with angels in heaven? Holding a belt, running after an angel, say, I want to do today. So because we claim to be ambassadors of Christ, then we are known by what we stand for, right? It's a fair assessment. We say we are complete holiness. So if we are complete, let us be judged by what we are producing. We cannot people, people are judging us. They are looking at the fruit. What fruits are we producing? What fruits are we producing, brethren? We cannot be a, a, a mango tree producing bananas. Then the foundation is wrong. How did you receive Christ? How were you called by the Lord? Some people said, ah, I met an angel in a shop. So are you going to call that shop holy shop? If you were meet to, to meet this angel in a toilet, are you going to call your toilet holy toilet? There's no record in the Bible where an angel has called anybody. An angel does not have heaven. 
It's only the Lord Jesus Christ who calls you and commissions you. If you are called by an angel, go and ask God, say, God, can you call me? Many are chosen, but many are called, but few are chosen. Many will come to him on that day. Say, Lord, Lord, was I not teaching on CHMI? This is a very sad reality. God is not a respecter of persons. What is man that you are mindful of him? It's not what you do. It's how, it's how you end your life that will determine where you are going. How you start, nobody's interested. It's how you are going to end. You may live 47 years, your Christian life. You go and commit adultery, you are dead and buried. Go straight to hell. Your 47 years becomes a waste. That's why we need to lay up a very solid foundation. First Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. To whom coming is unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Christ Jesus. What, sacrificing, what sacrifices are we offering? They are supposed to be a lively stone. They are supposed to be a lively stone. They are supposed to build up a spiritual house, a, royal, a holy priesthood. Remember, when they, in the book of Hebrews, they say, um, you are now a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Aaronic priesthood has been removed. The Leviticus, Leviticus priesthood, everything has been taken out. We have got a priesthood that exists forever. Remember when Abraham was coming from the defeat of kings, when his um, nephew, Lot, was taken in Sodom and Gomorrah. He met the king of Salem, Melchizedek. That was the only time that he was met. That's why the king of peace, when you go to Isaiah chapter 9, and to us a child is born. His name is called Wonderful, Father of Peace. When you start seeing, you say, ah, Jesus Christ was everywhere in the Bible. He was everywhere. What are we talking about? Laying a solid foundation in Christ Jesus. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 32. And now, brethren, I recommend you, I recommend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all, among all of them which are sanctified. I commend you, I commend you to God to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. If you, are not be, if you are not receiving the word, how do you grow? When the Lord was saying manna from heaven, manna, it was not manna. This is the bread of, this is the bread we are giving out. If you want to see the other bread is got yeast, it's not producing food. When you go into a ministry, when you go into a church, if you see after six months, you are you now you have become a perfect liar. Before it was small, small lies. Say, ah, were you on the phone? Say no. Now, now it's like you got a PhD in lying. You can lie, even the devil will smile and said, ah, this one can lie past me. That you have become an expert. And you say you are in a church. You came before, you said, ah, I will drink small, small. Now we are drinking 10 beers a day. And your pastor is still saying, no, don't drink, but do not get drunk. There is nothing like a church prostitute, an armed robber, a Christian armed robber. All these things is absolute nonsense. Many have been made to believe. They came and bought a projector for money they stole. And now they are saying, God, I said, God is part of it. No, God has nothing to do with it. People must be very careful. Don't be deceived. If you think God is nothing unholy can enter into his presence. If this man of God or a woman of God lacks discernment, it's just a taking for the sake of taking. Pray for him.
there is a danger. Don't just rush to be praying for people, say, ah, I want to pray for somebody. No. It's not only rushing to pray. I refuse to pray for somebody. I said, ah, oh, it came, they wanted the, the issue with their document. I said, if you made a lie to the home office, I will not, I'm not, because God is going to answer that prayer. And this person will say, God is a liar. Why did you allow this lie to go on? You will blaspheme God. I do not want to rob God of his blood. If somebody's got a clear conscience, my conscience does not allow me to do such a thing. We are complete holiness. When tomorrow, when this person comes, say, no, <laughs> you know what? It was from complete holiness that I get this my paper. So you cannot say I, go, I must go and restitute. All these things, it complicates our standing, our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be fooled or use emotions. Foundation of the building is important. It sets the limit, it sets the sizes. The higher we want to go, the deeper we, come, the deeper we, the deeper we must dig. So foundation is the primary, is the essential, is the primary. You cannot build a house without the foundation. If in half a meter, it doesn't really matter. It will maybe live 40, 50 years. If you go deeper, it will probably live a few hundred years. So your foundation must be solid. This is why it is important for us to discuss this issue. Laying a solid foundation in Christ Jesus. We are entertaining people. We have taken the work of comedians to, put, to come on the pulpit. People are busy claiming games like this. Listening to useless prophecies. They're not good. They don't edify God. They can tell you your name. Even the demons knows your name now. Were you not in sin yesterday when you came out to Christ? Why would the demon not know you when 30, 35 years you were living with this demon? The demon knows you very well. So don't claim, ah, speak man of God. What speak man of God? You need a solid foundation. You don't need a prophecy. What you need is repentance. What you need is the word of God. Read the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Men are being tossed to every doctrine that comes. Yes, as Christians, we must not get into foolish arguments. Foundation is the key. Foundation is essential. Where you are going to build up your Christianity. I see you as a brother. You are working with a woman, a young lady. I minister to you, I evangelize to you. Ah, I give my life to Christ. The first thing I'll ask you, are you married? Say no, then you are fornicating. If you are sleeping together. If not, let them have a supervised dating. Let them be dating, meeting in the church building where everybody will be seeing them. The, the um, risk of them sinning is too little. Once God is in it, you can marry even after three months so that you don't fall into sin. You cannot say, I'm going to repent. Repent of what? Many are taking God to be their grandfather. They have become too familiar with God. We have become too familiar with God. Because God gave me one revelation that came to pass. My own grandfather, I never met him. They said he was a witch doctor. He was a witch doctor. You will give dreams that say tomorrow in the afternoon, there's a person, two, three people are coming and it will come to pass. If he was here today, you will just put on a jacket. Will you know, will you, will you know that is a witch doctor? Be very careful. Don't build your foundation on things that do not help your eternity. Your eternity is more important than to come and tell you where you live, your brethren, your, 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 your siblings. Your siblings, 
all these things, they are not necessary actually. They are not necessary. Because after you speak those things, what is going to happen? First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 to 11. For we are laborers together with God. We are God's husband, we are God's farmer. We are God's building. We see three things being mentioned here. You and God, you are not coming to meet me here. You are not coming to see me in CHM, I know. You are coming to meet the Lord Jesus. So you and, and the Lord Jesus Christ, we, become, we are laborers together. We are God's farmer. What does a farmer do? Planting, evangelizing, reaping souls for God. How many of us are evangelizing? You started to let me relax, yet souls are going to hell every day. What relaxing do we talk about? Are we not going to relax when you go to heaven? The Lord Jesus Christ is crying every day. You talk to your neighbors. You don't minister to them about the Lord Jesus. When they meet you in hell, what are you going to tell them? Because you are told, no, you don't need to be evangelizing. It's not necessary. Once saved, forever saved. That's a lie. No evangelism, no heaven. No type, no heaven. Forget about it. No matter, like I always say, I don't get into foolish arguments. Whoever wants to argue, it's okay. This is God's work. God is not going to ask for anything from anybody. If you want to finance these operations, it does, but you're doing it for your own soul. If you choose God, you have, you have found peace for your soul. All these things that you see, RIP, rest in peace. There's no peace for the wicked. Once you die without Jesus Christ, you are dead and buried. Forget about it. No matter the sweet words, sweet charming that we talk to one another, all those things are useless. So we are laborers with God. We are God's farmers. And we are God's building. We see the three-story building here. We are working with God. We are God's farmer. We are God, you and God, we are working together because it's in us. We need to lay a very solid foundation here. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, that is Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, Paul or Diakupa, talking. I have laid the foundation in another building there on. We are building from what Paul or Diakupa put the foundation. Let every man take heed how he build it thereupon. How are you building? This is, this is why we are talking about this thing. This man was truly a writer. For the Igbos to call him Paul or Dakwa, they must have acknowledged him. He was an accomplished writer. He was an accomplished writer. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation. He laid the foundation. So if you see somebody preaching the gospel that the Apostle Paul did not preach, it is a perversion. It is a perversion. He never talked about, he never came to motivate people, rebuking you foolish Galatians who has bewitched you. Come here out of them and be a separate. That's Apostle Paul. If you go on willfully sinning after coming to the knowledge of truth, then there's no more sacrifice for you but a fearful judgment. This was Apostle Paul writing these things. Say God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So which Apostle Paul, which Apostle Paul are you putting then? You cannot come and say, I am a Christian, I am a pastor, I am a minister. Which gospel are you preaching? Many are abusing the pulpit today. Coming, settling personal differences. I see evangelist Victoria come here. I have got a slight difference. I can't minister about it. Ah, uh, there are some foolish people. Everybody, after the ministration, everybody knows that this person you're talking about. And you claim it's the Holy Spirit. Then your foundation is wrong. The Holy Spirit does not mix in such nonsense. 
God is not about emotions. He cannot come and be preaching somebody. Instead of edifying, you are bringing bitterness into somebody. Once you climb the pulpit, I'm not here, I'm not representing myself here. I'm representing the Lord. So when I come in and start attacking somebody, when are they going to, to defend themselves? It is a shame. Ministers of God are abusing the pulpit, dressing each other down like this, tearing one another, one another apart. And they said, we are going to heaven. Heaven indeed. Bitterness. How do we pray in that condition? What type of prayers do we pray? This heaven is too serious. We're living at the most sensitive time in history. Two weeks ago, I got another rapture, rapture revelation. And the people are joking here. Coming, joking with your eternity. Some are evangelizing in hell. Some are praying, praying in tongues in hell. Say, God, give me a chance which you are wasting. That's the only relief we were talking about yesterday. God is preserving you. Not that you have done nothing. You are the one who is finishing all the food in the shops, yet doing nothing. Say, ah, God, do you understand now? What is there to understand when souls are dying every day? I know with the mother instinct, even if a lion comes, she would rather have the lion to eat her. She will fight like a vicious, vicious lioness, fighting for the sun. May God give us the spirit for lost souls. This agency, this burden of souls upon our hearts. We can never be Christians. As long as we don't share the heart of Christ, we can never be true Christians. But that's why you see the things that matters most to us. The hope which Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 24. If your hope can be seen, if your hope is your husband, it's a false hope. If your hope is your wife, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 said, things that I know, the eye have not seen. And your hope, yeah, we are praying for a car. Are you, are you the first person to make a car in this whole world? A car that was made by almost 200 people until it came out. And you are saying, I, brethren, we want to lay a very solid foundation in Christ Jesus. We want to build upon the rock. Our Christianity is in shambles today because many just followed. They were meant to believe, say, Lord Jesus Christ, I accept you as Lord and Savior. You don't tell them to stop cigarette. Repent, go and sin no more. You are not out there to make friends. Give them the word, let them decide, let them reject the word. Don't lower the standard. It's not your word. If you are alone, don't even go evangelizing. You are not fit for it. You are not there to make friends. You are not there to be politically correct. Tell them, just show them. Anybody who does this thing, God said this is what he said. It's not you. Go in the scriptures. He cannot come and say, ah, my brother, I so you are in a relationship. Say yes. We have had sisters in this ministry that left very good men because they were married before. Maybe they were abused in a past relationship. But they saw them as a very good, very good man. They had nothing against him. Everything about him was good. It's only the Bible said, no, you are living in adultery. So they chose eternity over man. It's not, a, it's not how he feels. He will insult you, of course. Say, so you are a very foolish woman. Yeah, we are wasting my time. It's not wasting my time. The time that you have lived on this planet, if you live 50 years on earth, you have lived almost like seven minutes in heaven time. And when you go there, there's no husband. There's no father. There is no mother. It's an individual journey. Why would you let somebody take you to hell? If they have made up their decision to go, let them go alone now. Why do you want to be party to a person that have made up their mind to? So we're still talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 to 11. For we are laborers together with God. You are, how are you laboring with God? This way the foundation we're talking about. Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the scribes, you will not see the kingdom of God. 
I gave a brief history of the Pharisees, the scribes. They were known for charity. They will give. If they were, if they were earning 100 euros, they, instead of giving 10 euros, they will give 20 or 25. Yes, because they thought you were saved through works, which turned out to be wrong anyway, when the Lord was explaining this thing. Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees. They were not going to evangelize. If they evangelize, they will make you 10 times a child of hell than you were before. You can see, you are making, you are making small, small lies like this. When you come out from them, you are a big liar, an incorrigible liar. Somebody who can sow a bottle through lies. When you say, ha, ah, we will call them heavy weather. Say so this one, nothing. If he speaks, it's like they're speaking their mother language. They've mastered the art of life. And when you finish, say you are a Christian, then your foundation is weak. You have built on a very wrong foundation. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, Apostle Paul was saying, as a wise master builder, he laid the foundation, and another built on that foundation. In Galatians chapter 1, 6, and 7, he said, if, if an angel comes from heaven and preach another gospel, let it be a case. He said, even we, apostles, if we preach another gospel, let us be a case. What about you? This is the gospel. This is where we are taking our gospel from. This is prevention. If you cannot preach the gospel of Peter, Paul, the apostles, then you must have learned something very wrong. Go back to the roots. That's why we've decided to go on, onto the foundation. We need to see the fruits of repentance. Without repentance, there's no resurrection. There's no salvation. How do you get to salvation anyway? We are going to be talking all these things. Repentance through faith. I'll be digging deeper. The plow will be getting deeper every day. We'll be together for the next few several days, actually. I really think it is my duty. For at the foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. If your Jesus Christ is the one that gives curse, it's a wrong Jesus Christ. We don't have him in the Bible. We don't have that Jesus in the Bible. That is the horizontal gospel. The Bible of Tower Preachers. People are preaching for their stomach, not for the souls of the lost world. God is not interested in all the things. How many people do you know that are driving that have not prayed? How many people are living a better life that they have not prayed? And God is still blessing them. So, brethren, we are talking about laying the foundation. Any other foundation, no man can lay outside Jesus Christ. Whether you say it's, uh, there's, there's, there's the Mormonism, there's, uh, they, they dispute the Lord Jesus Christ, that's why we must mention the names. They don't acknowledge the date of Jesus Christ. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 6, they say all those things. Luke chapter 13, verse 8, they talk about this thing. Foxes, they come to mislead the children of God. We are not called to lay another foundation. Jesus Christ is the foundation. Other foundation is coming from the pit of hell. Don't be made to build up your life on stirrup walls, on this. Um, Things that can be easily break. You will think you are standing. That's why Apostle says, Apostle Paul said, take heed when you think you are standing left to fall. Many think they are going to heaven, as we talk. Many think they know what heaven looks like. Boasting like they have ever gone to heaven. They have not even shown a glimpse of hell. Say me, I know I'm going. No man can boast. 
First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 29, no flesh can stand in his presence and boast. It is impossible. Salvation is the gift of God. It's not by works. We are saved by grace through faith. No man should boast of salvation. Muslims are living a better life. I was sent an audio by Auntie Jovita today. A Muslim man was challenging the Lord Jesus Christ. said, I live a holy life. The Lord did not dispute it. It took me to that young rich man, the young rich ruler, the, the, the young rich man. You know what he said? He said, ah, you, the Lord asked him, he said, oh, he said, how can I be saved? He said, you must live like this. He said, ah, he even laughed. He said, ah, Ten Commandments, I observe all of them. The Bible said Jesus Christ loved him. And he said, can you now sell all your possession and give it to the poor? Just imagine, he was not lying before the Lord. He said, all those things, I've done them. Religiously, Ten Commandments, which are, which you are failing to hold yourself here. And you are posting to be a Christian. He was speaking to God himself. He said, this ones, I've done them. He said, go and sell this one because it had the idols in his life. So we can see our Christianity now. If a Muslim, if the Lord can attest that somebody who is a Muslim, Buddha, he wake up 3 a.m. to pray, things that we're not doing as Christians. It's a shame. It puts us to shame. Just imagine, a Muslim, you know Jesus Christ, the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. That's when you sleep like a dead, like a dead man like this. A Muslim would watch it, praying to a dead person. And there you are, you know the living God. He cannot even pray once a day. He said, God, do you know now? What to what know now? Muslims, whether they are happy or not, they pray. Whether they were beaten outside, they will still come and pray. Your only problem is, you were told that if God does not answer prayer, is the wicked God. Did God promise you a child in the Bible? Did he promise to give you anything? Hannah, people caught Hannah. Hannah went to cry unto God. He said, God, since you don't have prophets, all the prophets that you have here failed you. If you give me a son, I'll give you a prophet. God said, this woman is making sense. God said, you are making sense. What happened? God said, you're sure. I'll give you a son. True to a way, she came back. Say, God, since you've given me a son, you have got a prophet. This is the prophet Samuel that we know. Prophet Samuel, he had the three, all the three offices in the Bible. He was a pastor, he was the priest, he was the king, he was the prophet. You see here. Remember that time there were rulers, this, this. We need to understand say, our foundation here. Foundation must be understood. Laying the foundation. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 to 18. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do people say I am? Who do people say CHMI is? And they said, some say that our John the Baptist, some say Elias, some say Jeremiah, and some say they are one of the prophets. Just imagine, you are yeah, one of the prophets. He said, okay, I hear you. I hear you. He said to them, but who do you say I am? It's not about others now. Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus Christ said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, for flesh and blood is not revealed this one to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you, that is where this popular saying always comes, to say, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail again. That's where the popular verse is. If you read a few verses down the line, you hear the Lord saying, Satan, get behind me when Peter was talking. He said, ha, 
This is a man who was praising a short while ago. You see discernment. The Lord knew all these things. It's not about friendship. Your heaven is more important than that. So he was saying, upon you, Peter. So this was the contrast of Peter with the rock. He did not compare himself to. It is, it is something that is important. Upon you, Peter, I'm going to build my church and the, the gates of hell shall not prevail. When we hear church, we see a building. They are not different from the Pharisees. Outside, everything is looking well, beautiful, well, flowers, all this thing. What is coming from there? Stinking in heaven. They are not known as Christians in heaven. If there's one, there's probably one or two people that are praying from the heart that have been taught by the Lord to pray. The rest, they are just coming in to make up the number. They become pastors, customers. Because they are only giving money to pastor. So, in laying the foundation, we have both four phases. One, we need to enter. Jesus is the door. John chapter 10, verse 7. Remember yesterday when I was reading about the ark, when Noah entered the ark, when I was saying, Jesus said, I am the sheep, I am the door of the sheep. When he says sheep, he's not talking about God. There's a difference between God and sheep. A huge difference. You see, if you rebuke a sheep, it will be happy, it comes. If you re rebuke a God, it will rip you apart, it will tear you apart. These are the many gods that we are having in ministry in church today, filling 70% of the churches. Slight rebuke, they are busy defending themselves. When Psalm chapter 34, verse 14 or 15 says, Seek peace and pursue. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and live a holy life. How do we follow peace? Where is our foundation? Revelation. The Father, by the Spirit, reveals the Son. I want to minister about this thing sometimes before. The plan of salvation was designed by God the Father. Implemented by our Lord Jesus Christ and revealed by the Holy Spirit. So we need the Father by the Spirit to reveal the Son. Because if you don't know if you don't have the spirit, then how are you going? Who is going to witness to you about the Lord Jesus Christ? Acknowledgement. Remember Philip in the Unach in Acts chapter uh, 35, 8, 35, I think. You can check. It's not, so, it's not somewhere very far away from there. When that Unach was, Ethiopian Unach, was busy reading like this, he said, Philip said, do you even understand what you are reading? They say, how will I understand if nobody has taught me? Huh? Was he talking about himself? He will be led to the, to, to the altar to, to die. Was he talking about himself? He said, no. Then he saw what I said. Tell me, what can stop me from getting baptized? This is a eunuch trying to read the Bible for yourself. Now you went to school. You have got WhatsApp. You have got Facebook. You have got YouTube. I know some some don't have uh, physical Bible. Where is your uniform as a Christian? So if your phone is stolen, your Bible is stolen. If your phone messes up, it means your Bible is also messed up. Children of God, you need to be wiser. This is our authority, our Bible. This is what we need. Stop giving excuses. If we're meeting in the physical, you will not come in with a phone. Switch off your phone for two, three hours or four hours. You don't care. What message? Even if somebody is blown up in a plane, where are you going to wake them up? Is it not about your soul? There is nothing you are in the presence of God. Learn, let us learn to, to, worship and, to worship and fear the God that we serve. 
we treat God waste more, much more waste than our enemies. When you are going to work, you are the first to be there. Yet you are getting insults every day. When it comes to God, you will understand. Understand what? So we, we must acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Then we are saved. Then confession, this is the baptism now. This is public with your mouth. You must say, Jesus Christ is Lord. I say, Jesus, when you are talking, you are looking like this. Are you ashamed of your Lord? Are you ashamed of being a child of God? Taking apologies. It is still possible to receive Jesus Christ today. He was not only received in the Bible, in the Old Testament or the New Testament. Revelation is brought through the eternal Holy Spirit. When you get revelation dreams, you open visions or so, if the Holy Spirit will be trying to bring you closer unto the Lord. So we talked about three things now. We have talked about three things. A Christian life compared to a building. Laying the foundation. And then building on the foundation now. Building on the foundation. Comparing a Christian life to a building. We know you don't just come start putting walls like this, they'll fall down. So you need a foundation. Laying the foundation. And then we come to building on the foundation. Then we will go into the Bible. Then we will go to a few things. Because of our time, probably, or we'll continue a little bit of it tomorrow. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Evangelist Victoria, can you please read for us if your Bible is with you? Yeah, the only one I'm seeing looking at me. I'm not seeing others. Matthew 24. No, Matthew 27, verse 24 to 27. Matthew what? chapter 7, 7, chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Okay. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and the great was the fall of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we, are we seeing something here? The Lord was telling them, if you listen to what he tells you, you are like somebody building his house on a rock. It's different from sand. In sand, you become somebody foolish. If after hearing this message, you still behave like a raven, you go out and spend eh, all the time there with the dead bodies because everything out there was dead. What are you going to do? You have heard that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And there you are, you are checking with your eternity. We say, ah, me, people cannot do this. It is. Your eternity is more important. The Lord said in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 10 and 11, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 32, it talks about um, he does not wish that any should perish. It's not his wish. I like the 318 part of it because it helps me to wash my hands. I don't want anybody's blood on my hands. Let me, let me just read it so that we we will refresh our memory. When I'm invited anyway to preach, that is always my first lesson. 
That's where I get my authority from. I don't want to go somewhere without blood, then come back as a matter. It will not be my portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Ezekiel 3, verse 18, it says, When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest, givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. To save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require from thine hand. Hmm. How many people are going to escape this thing? Your brother drinks beer. He's humanizing. Ah, oh, he's my young brother. Ah, oh, it's okay, I love him. If he dies without you telling him about Christ, your own eternity is at stake. This verse is, cond is condemning many Christians, actually. I loved my father. You never ministered your father about Jesus Christ. You were giving him money. Was he going to live forever? Is it not yesterday that we were reading First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 15? We are sojourners. We are passing through on this earth. You will look like somebody is going to live for 100 years on this earth. Who told you that? If you go to sleep and do not wake up, what becomes of you? And that's where you are, you are joking with your eternity. Say, me, I'm not going to do this. No. Well, say, let us seek for forgiveness from God. Say, no, I cannot repent. What have I done? Stop sowing those fig trees for yourself. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6 says, the filthy rag. We live in self deception at times. This is the most critical and sensitive time in the history. The angels are waiting. Say, so Jesus is receiving his bride. There are many angels. Oh, they just see here say, ah, there's a pastor Jeff um, on earth. Say, so, ah, we've got a pastor on earth. They are looking forward to meeting me. But there's a condition for meeting me. It's not like, I, it's not a wish. It's not because you want it that it's going to happen. No, you've got to live a holy life. Be a holy and blameless. When you live a blameless, you cannot be holy. You cannot pre preach the truth of God without love or preach love without the truth. It's a lie. Sister Sonia said, a lie. I tell her so. It is impossible now. How do you preach truth without preaching love? These are two pairs of shoes. If you go on the street walking with one pair of shoes, why should it be different with Christianity? It is a lie. Don't be deceived. Only what, only what you live, sir. No, we only need love. Love. Uh-uh. Not only love. There are two pairs of shoes. So you cannot put, you cannot put your leather jacket, your, your one shoe, and one slippers like this. People will call you a madman. <laughs> but this is spiritual madness that is being accepted in the church today. When we see people dressing like that spiritually, at times we sympathize, you know. It's like the emperor. Many, we think people are clapping us. Let me tell you a story. Several years ago, there was a man, you know, I did this before. They were not like these shorts that we are seeing today. These were old shorts, um, like boxer shorts, because men, they were not putting on underwear then. I don't know what happened to his Adidas short. People started to see. The man started running like a madman. He came number one. He came out tops. Say, Hofi, see. Hofi, the man started running like this. Hofi, see. Hofi, when he was running, he thought people were cheering you up. Little did he know they were laughing at his nakedness. When he got number one, people were still saying, Hofi, see. When you look, they say, oh, my God, I didn't know. So at times, be very careful when people are, people are cheering. This journey, there's no praises. Praises will get them from the king. Only Lord Jesus Christ said, my child, welcome. A faithful servant. Don't get praises of men. If you do, you're not going anywhere. If you are acknowledged by men, you're doing something wrong. This gospel has no friends. People must be offended. If you have not been rejected for this gospel, if you have not been rejected, 
than Christian and Christianity. That people are calling you a fanatic. People are saying, oh, this gospel is too hard. Yes, it's too hard. In this gospel, it is too serious a message to come and make friends. If I go to sleep and do not wake up, this festival, I say, Papa God, I don't tell you a bikini. I don't tell you a bikini. If they come here, I have got to wash my hands of their blood. If you don't repent, it's not only preaching about these things. You need to repent thereafter. The devil is holding a lot of things against you. And there you come and say, ah, oh, I repented yesterday. Did you not eat yesterday? You are eating today. Did you not take your shower yesterday that you are claiming to say, God, should I be repenting every day? If a king in the book of Jonah, chapter 3, could fast with animals, just imagine animals. Mm. God said, ah, this man, he exceeded, he exceeded the expectations of God. God said, if this man can, animals, imagine animals, babies, toddlers, they fasted. They didn't die. God said, ah, if a king, a president of a country can declare a fast by emergency, emergency temporary measures act, there's a fast from tomorrow, three days. No one is going out to the field with a, nobody. And nobody said a thing. God said, do you see how he has humbled himself before me? And there you are. You are moving with your chest high like this. God is not your grandfather. Stop treating God like your grandfather. Don't become too familiar with God. God is not a joker. Until now, I have not got a compliment from the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a rebuke after rebuke. I prayed, I said, Father, I don't want you to be, of what is his praises when I'm at here? I know I want to go and meet him there. When he say, welcome, my son. If I get all those praises and going nowhere, for what, of what use? We are here seated. You have got things to do. You are coming from work. You are tired. And you just come and say, Papa God, you want to go away. A thief is coming. After spending so much time hearing this word, is it not a shame? Mm. It's a scandal. It's a scandal. Competing with the prostitutes and robbers to get into hell after hearing this message. Competing, say, no, I must be number one to go and burn. This fire is not an easy fire. It's not a fire that comes up. It will not be quenched. And this fire that people are talking about, it is only a small fire. There is a bigger fire which death and the devil are crying. They are, they are fearing as we talk. And there you are, wasting your life. Repentance is the deal. There is no way that we can come to holiness without repentance. Forget about it. Romans chapter 6, 16 to 22. You find all those verses there. You cannot come and attain holiness without repentance. Impossible. Are you not coming from, from a grandfather that dedicated you to, to, to those gods before you were born? If you dissociated, if you renounced those spirits, no, you need to repent. Say, God, I am bought by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. I distance, I cut, cut all those ties with them. Everything I am bought by the precious blood of Jesus. Not coming and talking nonsense. Say, ah, I now know. This Christianity, you don't have to touch Christianity at the top like this, like a bottle. Start from the bottom. Lay a solid foundation in Christ Jesus. That's why we've got lukewarm Christians. These are the people you take one from this one, you are in the next ministry. Seven ministries, one complain after the other. I went to this church, the pastor's wife is like this, always complaining. Always complaining. Spirit of memory. Brethren, we need to grow up. We need to lay a solid foundation. So it's just a hearing God's word. If you hear these things that I'm telling you and do them, I would like a new to a builder who built his house. So hearing the word of God is very important. But doing, doing it is more, much more important. 
it's much more important. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Let us read together. At times, I don't want to take time, you know. It is important. Um, I think on Wednesday, I'll give us an opportunity to ask questions. It's all let them ask questions now. Is it not the Bible we are reading from? Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 6, verse 46 to 49. And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? <laughs> Hi, this is a powerful saying. Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I say. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Praise Master Jesus. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it. It was founded upon the rock. Jesus is the rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a foundation built on a house upon earth. Brethren, this is a serious message. If your foundation is not solid, you are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. I want us to search our hearts and know there is some, there, you know, there is something that uh, is it Matthew chapter fifteen? Let's just look at it together. The terms is, is very important. Matthew chapter fifteen. It says verse nine, but let me let me show you something. Matthew chapter fifteen. Why uh, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of elders, for they wash not their hands when they eat bread? Why are they transgressing the tradition of elders? This was the time when the, when the Lord Jesus Christ was quiet, 465 years. Some would say, oh, that saved the Lord. When you read Exod um, Ezekiel chapter 22, they were doing the same thing. God is saying when God was quiet, be wary of people saying, God say God is God. Every converse, every sentence with God, with God. God, why do you speak such nonsense? God, God. God is not like a man who will be speaking like a radio. Head. God is not a radio who will be talking, 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 talking like this. Go and read the Bible and know God from the Bible. He spoke already. Unless if he wants to give you a revelation. There are people who have been praying 72 hours. People pray 40 days. You don't hear them, we see them with their humility. I met a sister several years ago. Ah, the Holy Spirit said, ah, the Holy Spirit said. I said, sit down, my sister. Do you know the Holy Spirit? I said, how does he look like? I said, no. When did you come in faith? The devil appears as an angel of light. You come to church late every day. Every time you come to church, you are the last to come in when the church is about to close. They said, the Holy Spirit said, forget that nonsense. He cannot be the last to come here and talk about the Holy Spirit. When you are staying at home, the Holy Spirit will be quiet. You only talk when you come into the church. These are the spirits, the sorcerer spirits, the witchcraft spirits manifesting in church. If the Holy Spirit can let you miss the word of God, that can edify your life, that can change your life. And then you come and say, Holy Spirit. Don't use the name of God, the, word, the name of God in vain. Say, it is laid upon my heart, it's okay. You don't have to be a, a traditional guru. The 15, this is the one I wanted to read. Matthew chapter 15, verse 9. But in vain they do worship me. Let's start from 8. The one you are saying from Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. He said, these people draw it. But let us start from 7. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah, you are saying Isaiah prophesied about you. When you read the Old Testament, Testament, there are no scribes, there are no Pharisees, there are no these teachers of it was the Lord now revealing them. He was standing on Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18. They say, Isaiah prophesied about you, you hypocrites. You worship me with your mouth. When your heart is far away from me. And it's said, but in vain they do. You are worshiping true, but you are doing it in vain because your foundation is wrong. That needs to be sorted out, brethren. Foundation is very important. 
traditions of men. Traditions of men. God is saying, God is saying, God, when God is quiet, people are still using the name of God. Ah, God is saying this. Ah, God said this. Why don't you say that it is written in the Bible? This, this, every situation is in the Bible. Why don't you use the Bible? You want to scare people who say God is saying, God is saying. If you become a, a microphone for God, that will be talking everywhere. Go and read the Bible. Set yourself. Live your life. Make sure your foundation is very solid. Traditions of men. That's why all Valentine is being celebrated in, in the church today. People are celebrating love. Which love are you saying? This is a, this is, this kind of, it's a, I don't know, it's a demonic love. It has nothing to do with God. You come with, a, with, one, with one useless flower. You think God is interested in that useless flower. It's like, oh, small tears. It's like, God, if you drop dead, if that roof of that church breaks down, forget that you're in a church or that you are in that building, not a church. You will perish and go to hell. They are not food wanking God to say, I was in church. Doing what? It's not going to school. You can go to school for nothing. Going to school for nothing. You can go to school, pay nothing, but going and doing things for nothing. That's what many will do, going to church for nothing. Wasting their time. They just look and say, I, I make, make pastor see me small I go. Does your pastor have heaven? This message is too serious to make friends. Come here out of them and be here separate. I had a friend from England. He separated from his wife. He ran away actually from his wife. When he was trying to justify himself, I said, you know what? After finishing this conversation, delete my number. It's not about friendship. You can support him as a man. What about the four children that are outside, that are in that marriage? Running away from his responsibility. No, I'm not going to marry. What does the Bible say? If she go and meet another man, of course they to sin. Sin must come, but who through him it comes? Standing on a wrong foundation. They say, no, I can leave. Now I hate he's going to marry a woman. We saw it coming. Did we not? Did we not grow up in these ghettos that they are trying to be wise to us? I was not born a holiness pastor. Thank God for that. So that experience. This my my eyes are not red from Ugoro or from Ibo. I did not drink Ugoro. We have seen a lot of things. Experience has taught us things. So when people come. Start telling this thing, no, I don't want to do this. It's a lie. Sister Sonia said, no, lie be this one. Lie. Just trying to convince people, said, ah, it is okay. You go and support. If it was your daughter, were you going to support it? You put your eternity, friendship, friendship above eternity. Bible could call you Mugu now. Huh? You want to be called the Mugu with the Bible. That you are driving, forget that you can drive now. Naba was rich in the Bible, but it's still called a Mugu. You are still called a Mugu. And those, those that were wise were waiting for him for the Mugu. Just imagine, the Bible has got a good sense of humor. This is a person who is rich. People are working for him, but he's calling him Mugu. So if you don't have Jesus Christ, you're a Mugu. Forget about the car or the job that you are having. Nobody's interested anyway. Preconceptions. You, think, you know, these traditions of men, this gospel, there are many things that have come out in the church today. People are being forced, uh, no, let us just, um, a feast of love in the church. When they greet each other, you hear somebody hissing. After two weeks, you want to have a feast of love. Love, this is like that, like a snake that wants to bite its, its victim. 
What type of life is this one? Is it not witchcraft? When another sister cooks food, another one does not eat because they are afraid of being poisoned. And you say you are in a church of God. People half the time are talking about food like they don't eat at home. Is that what God called you to be distributing food in church? Let people feed from the word of God. They will not die now. How many people in Somalia were living through the thousand not eat for several weeks? Have you seen a fit Somalia? No. It became part of their genes. You go to church, food, 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 food. Are you going there for food? People are now coming to feed themselves, cut on expenses. Instead of using that money for evangelism, they are busy growing people's stomach. Hmm? Is it not witchcraft? Unbelief. Rebellion. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, I think. Yeah. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. These are things that we are having in church today. Rebellion. When we talk about these things, when we talk about Jezebel, it's not these earrings that you are putting on. This spirit is very I talked about this thing about three or four years ago on CHMI. These things, if you are to look at that tip, God will help us. It's a very controlling spirit. Forget about this hearing, this thing. It manifests differently. From pastors' wives, chief culprits amongst them. It, it can possess a man or a woman. When you see it like this, it's either my way or no man's way. The tomboy spirit. You can see it. Say, so, ah, oh, oh, this is the spirit. It says that goes or it doesn't go. When you start seeing the manifestations of such spirit, he says the Holy Spirit. Some of the Sosara people were calling me a Christian. They were calling me uh, Oga Bishop, Oga Apostle, Oga Pastor. Papa Pastor, say, yeah, Pastor. Until the Apostle says, yeah, he's a, witch, he's a, he's a, he's a wizard. Is a sorcerer. Stop following, stop following, following, following. This follow, follow. Where does it come from? Wrong foundation. What you need is Jesus. Don't compare yourself to anybody. Jesus is the rock upon which our the church is built, upon which our faith is built. Any other. Mm -mm. It's a perversion. It's a lie. Joel, um, the scripture, the Bible, is the word of God in writing. Let us see where it is. Some of these things, because it's very important for us to know. John chapter 10. Praise the Lord. <coughs> <coughs> John chapter 10, verse 35, I think. Yeah. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, the scripture cannot be broken. The scripture cannot be broken. So the word of God in writing, this is the scriptures. The word of God in person is the Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word. We know, we know John now. This John chapter 1, the 14 says, he became the light of man and your yeah, Bible students, let us read this together so that tomorrow we can follow up. Here we are. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. Praise the Lord. We see it in Revelation chapter 19, verse 18, but we are not going there. Uh, then John chapter 1, verse 14, praise Master Jesus. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst men, and we beheld his glory as the glory of only the begotten son, the begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Does your life have truth in it? So we can see here, the Revelation 19 says, 
His name was written, the truth, the word of God and the truth. When you read Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, 18. So there's the total agreement between the word in scripture and the word in person. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ said, I did not come to take away the laws, to, to nullify the, the prophets, why, what the prophets were saying. No, he came to fulfill them. So we can see there's an agreement here. So if your scripture that you will be quoting, or your pastor will be quoting, if it does not tally with this way, there's a perversion somewhere. So I'm rounding up John chapter 14. Then we can have a few prayers. Praise Master Jesus. John chapter 14, let's start from verse 19. Yet a little while, and the world seem, seem, seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye also live. 22. Judah said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt multif, um, manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, oh, this word love, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and will come unto him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. This is a very significant statement. He that loveth me, not keepeth not my sayings, he, no, we want to 23. Good, praise the Lord. John chapter 14, verse 19. John chapter 14 verse 20 and 20. There's something significant here. Pause from the world. If you keep God's word, it distinguishes you from one out there. If you keep God, keeping God's word is the supreme test of every disciple's love for God. Your love for God, your love, love is the motivation for obedience. I love God. I don't want to drink beer. When you see women, they say death is coming on. Hmm? Say woman, say hi. This woman, say hi. Forget about it. Death is coming. Many, this is the weapon that the devil tried. He won through it. Keeping God's word is the supreme cause of God's love for the disciple. We are all disciples of Christ. Through God's word, Christ manifests because the word of God is kept and obeyed. You keep the word and obey it. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 22, where God is also, it talks something about that, keeping their statutes. Through God's word, the Father and the Son indwell in the disciples. We will come and take our God. You can't love, you cannot love God more than you love his word. How is it possible? I love God and you are living his life. How do you love God? How do you love God? So we see that there is no contradiction in, in the Bible. There is no contradiction. So today we have been talking about, we talked about three, oh yeah, a few things actually. We talked about Christian life compared to a building, laying the foundation, building on the foundation, the Bible, as the word of God, John chapter 10, verse 35, John 1, verse 1, John chapter 1, verse 14, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 to 13. If I, if I, if I claim them wrongly, please remind me. So, we cannot be beaten by a Muslim in claiming the Bible. Let us be moving Bibles and leaving it. Huh? We know all, all functions of our telephones without checking this thing. And the vital things. You cannot love God more than you love his word. A true disciple of Christ is known. Is this, you can distinguish him from the world by the way that he lived his life. A true Christian of a true Christian. A born again Christian does not live in strife. Let us try to live in peace with one another. Over to you, evangelist.